Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How's everybody doing out there? George, how you doing? Having a great week? Had a great week and a great weekend, too. So great, great right. to be back. It's good to be back, and it's always good to have everybody out there watching us or listening or whatever it is they do. Our guest today is right below us. That is Chris Fries. Chris, how you doing? I'm good, guys. How you been? We've been, we've been good, and it's been a long time since you've been on. But we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff and all the stuff that you're doing and how to become successful at voiceover, you know, which I guess is what this show is about. So stay tuned. Chris Fries is with us on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Ah, oh, another week, another show. Oh, wait, that's the wrong button. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot we had Chris on. I oh, should have okay. had this one. Ah, oh, that works better. Okay. So anyway, okay. <laughs> you know, the, the, my wife is like, are you doing your show tonight? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, I thought you just did it last week. No, it's been two weeks since we did the show. God, time just Life goes moves by. pretty fast. I you know. don't stop and look around for a while. You might miss it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, we were looking around all weekend. We went up to all of these natural gardens all over Southern California over the weekend. And after you see a couple of, you know, sustainable gardens, you know, that are all desert plants, it's like, all right, we saw this at the last house. Okay, they still have the, well, yellow lupins. Who knew they were yellow lupins? I love, I love going on the nature and seeing the flowers right now. It's a great time to be outside in Southern California. Yeah. Mountain biking through the flowers, having flowers stuck in my beard my handlebars it's, just, it's, it's a lot of fun it's a, really, it's a really pretty time to be outside it is and we've got super bloom going on right now with all the rain we've had here oh yeah, yeah. it's happening it's popping exactly yeah so i keep wondering why has it been so cold here in southern california because hell is frozen over i guess <laughs> uh anyway a lot of rain exactly it is time to introduce our very very special guest who's going to be talking with us for the next hour uh, Chris Fries is currently the voice of Dodge, Chevron, America's Best, and Kubota. They're the guys that make the you know the, the little high lift things, and has recent national campaigns for spots for BF Goodrich, Blue Def. He'll have to tell us what that is. Credit Karma, Shields, Peak, TGI Fridays, and is or has recently voiced promos for History Channel, ESPN, Fox, and others. Plus, lots of video game performances, which we'll talk about. And it's time to welcome back to our show after a seven-year absence, Chris Fries. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. It's great to have you back on. Yeah, we were looking. It's like we hadn't been on since, like, we moved the show to Southern California. Since it's God so was a boy. crazy when you said we should have Chris on. I was like, didn't we just have? Oh, <laughs> in 2015. Boy, whoosh. <laughs> no, you know, I see Chris time. four times a year, usually at his place to do studio maintenance. So I see Chris all the time, but so you lose track of time. But it's exactly. great to see you here on the yeah. show. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh, so thrilled to be here. All right. Well, let's get into the meat of the matter. You know, since you haven't been here for a while, and perhaps our many in our audience are not familiar with you, even though they probably are, since telling him you know, all the different things that you've been doing. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and training and how you got into this this crazy n nutty business yeah yeah no i've been uh full-time voiceover since uh since 2004 and um it uh it was a long journey i i 
started off in radio, was in a college radio station, tried to get a foothold, uh, wanted to be an on-air personality in radio, uh, worked in the promotions department and, and was a board operator at a, at a local radio station and trying to get a foothold there and never really got on air or anything like that. That was something that uh, I was told repeatedly, oh, you don't really have what it takes. You don't really have the voice for it. You don't really have the sound for it. But, you know, you do good work in the promo department. And I'm like, oh, well, thanks. Maybe someday. Um, I eventually uh, uh, got out of that line of work altogether and uh, uh, in trying to find full-time uh, radio work. When in municipal government, which was a soul-crushing job, um, uh, for 10 years, uh, uh, detoured away from, from working with my voice or trying to, uh, eventually then was laid off, uh, from that job in 2004 and wanted to just take the plunge in voiceover. And, uh, I started taking classes, found out that, you know, how to kind of get started in taking a bunch of group classes. I live in Orange County, uh, uh California, which is about 40, 45 miles outside of LA Hollywood area. So it wasn't too bad to get into uh, L.A. for the classes at that time. All the classes were up in uh, L.A., so I'd go to three times a week and just take those group classes with, uh, you know, the voice caster, Calmanson, Elaine Craig, uh, all the places up there that anybody in the Southern California area that's been in the business for a while is very familiar with. Um, and just, yeah, just kept taking classes, kept taking classes. That was the big thing was the education side is, is learning the craft. Uh, it's one thing to be sit, told that, oh, you got a good voice. You should do voiceover or whatever, or, you know, <laughs> you have a good speaking voice, but you have to learn how to act basically. And, uh, so I had to figure that out. I was lousy at first, but, uh, you know, got better and better made a demo probably a little too soon. And, uh, but then still ended up getting, you know, early representation, some regional agents. Uh, it, it just took it took probably about four years from 2004 to 2008 of just training, working on those pay-to-play sites. Back then, they were um, you know not as strong as I, they, I guess they are now. I haven't worked in those pay-to-plays like the Voices.com, Voice One Two Three, those types of things. But uh, I think it was it was helpful for me early in my career to do those and get some experience because I didn't have representation uh, back then. So how do you work if you don't have an agent because an agent gets you work. So these pay to plays kind of helped, uh, helped with that and get me some uh, early experience. Uh, but then the regional agents uh, started to kind of slowly trickle in a couple of uh, uh, jobs here and there and eventually got a, uh, uh, LA representation and got my first national campaign in 2008. Um, it was a Minute Maid commercial and I was, I was thrilled with it. It was uh, aired uh, on, um, you know, national network TV during uh, American Idol back then it was very, very popular. And the Beijing Olympics was on and aired during that. And so friends were calling and saying, Hey, you're on uh, American Idol. I'm, like, I'm watching American Idol, but I, I taped it and I was fast forwarding. So I fast forwarded through my own <laughs> debut commercial, which was <laughs> so, they got to rewind. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, uh, Don't but, skip yeah. the commercials, folks. They yeah, gotta, yeah. That, that's you got to listen to those. Now, important. of course, if I ever see a commercial, especially if the family's in the – in the family room with me and uh it's again it's always fast forwarding through and i might recognize a, a dodge spot or something that's airing i'm like oh hey let's go back and they're like what are you stopping for i'm like hey my dodge commercial come on dad fast forward yeah, no, exactly. we've seen it before <laughs> eye rolling <laughs> eye <you>. rolling <laughs> i'm so Whoa. so my family's so proud of me i can just uh it just warms my heart the, the love that they have for <laughs> for what i do that's but it, hey, it warms my heart. I, I still get a thrill uh, hearing myself. Although it is funny if I hear myself in any application, a video game, a commercial, a promo, I always think, hmm, I could have done that better. I, I should have made the turn a little uh, brighter, or sped up that tag a little bit more, emphasize that uh, you know, word. I'm constantly tinkering and, and never fully satisfied, which is uh, a, a I guess a, a burden and a blessing uh, at the same time because I'm kind of a perfectionist with the, with that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, but yeah, it took a uh, took a few years to get the traction going. 2008, then by about 2010, two more years before I was kind of making enough to consider myself a working actor. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was uh, it was a long road, and now it's I, I've been blessed beyond my uh, wildest dreams. So it's it's been it's been a good ride. 
Yeah. I I would say you're, you're the perfect example of whose voice is that? Uh, we hear you in everything. I mean, what have yeah, we been you're hearing? Of a you? chameleon too. Chris. Yeah. I mean, what have we mm -hmm. heard you in lately? Like in, you know, in 2023. There's a few campaigns that are, uh, and that's kind of the big thing with uh, uh, voice actors is, is, especially if you do commercials or, or promos and that is, it's not just the one-offs. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of one-off commercials that, that it's something that runs uh, randomly in a regional part of the country. And, and then it's, gone uh, after a month or two but to get the campaigns to get that passive income uh, uh you know going is is something that every voice actor really strives for and and i'm blessed with a, a few campaigns uh, uh one of uh, which is a uh, dodge uh, the, all the muscle cars for dodge i do um america's best i'm the voice of the owl that optometry uh line and uh chevron uh the animated cars that are zipping around i've oh, been on yeah. that campaign for uh several years um kubota the tractors uh and um uh, utility vehicles and uh construction equipment and stuff like that uh, uh i seem to it's funny with the kubota and that there's a kind of a I guess a signature sound that I might have, and everybody kind of has in voiceover. It's what you want to try to start. That's your kind of, what's your wheelhouse. And I think my area is, is um, well, I guess I can be, have some versatility and range to do something bright and friendly like Chevron. I tend to go back and get the bulk of my work in my signature sound, which is going to be that casual uh, blue collar folksy kind of thing. That's uh, so I do a lot of stuff with uh, say Kubota and a lot of agricultural spots and stuff. So I've got some friends that are in uh, certain uh, rural parts of the country and they're te they tell me they can't swing a dead cat without hearing one of my ag spots uh, <laughs> pop up. So I'm like, I'm like, that's a, that's a wonderful analogy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, how much fun it is swinging dead cats. Ryan. Swinging dead cats. <laughs> you know? in those spots. But, uh, but yeah, the, the commercial campaigns have been uh, uh, really going uh, well. There's a few others and, uh, and the promo work uh, uh, that I do for like History Channel, ESPN, uh, uh, every season, like college football, I do the ESPN uh, game of the week. Uh, I do a lot of stuff for Fox in that same uh, uh, realm, too. So I guess in that same realm of doing s agriculture spots, kind of the hand in hand of the blue collar is is sports and stuff. So uh, uh, that seems to and that's a lot of fun because I'm a big sports fan. So it, it's always a big uh, I, I get a big kick out of doing stuff like that. Uh, yeah because uh, because uh, i'm a fan so yeah, that's important anyway. yeah if you're just joining us our guest tonight is the one and only chris fries who does just about sounds like everything in voiceover that somebody should be able to do everybody specializes in one thing or another you seem to be crossing the entire gamut of everything that's out there and uh sure it's easier to be enthusiastic about a product that you actually are enthusiastic about yeah you know true <laughs> and I, that's always the thing in, in voiceover where where if I believe it, if I feel it, if I have a, an interest or a drive or something behind that, it's so much easier to then to be able to communicate that and to come across uh, uh, in those auditions to, as somebody that, uh, hey, this guy seems to stand apart. Why? Because there's a passion behind it. And, and mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I, I can bring maybe, maybe I bring a little something different uh, that kind of helps me stand out. That's great. Uh, if you've got a question for Chris. And that's all of you out there, and I know there's a bunch of you watching right now, about his career or some advice or whatever it is you want to ask him, throw it in the chat room right now, whether you're in Facebook Live or you're in YouTube Live or even maybe even on LinkedIn, because I know we're over there now, too. We're everywhere. Uh, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room, and we will get to those questions in just a little bit. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So with all of these different things that you're doing, although you sort of answered this, but be a little bit more specific, what's your favorite stuff to do? Mm. I think, yeah, because of the passion of, of the interest in like, say the sports stuff, uh, um, I, I just really get a kick out of that. And then also some of the video game stuff that I do, it's some of my harder work, but some of the, 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 titles i've been in i think three or four of the call of duties uh more recently saints row uh mass effect um and uh my gosh i gotta look at some of them after a while it's like it's tough to kind of keep track it's it's wonderful work but it's it uh, it just becomes uh if you do an uh 
a decent number of them, they start to kind of like, what am I this week? You know, what kind of monster, alien, <laughs> hero, villain have I become? But that's part of what the appeal is, is because that you really get to kind of stretch your creative legs uh, a lot more. Say if I were to do something uh, for one of my commercial campaigns, uh, you know, the the, uh, the uh, America's Best, the Owl is, is a fun, fun campaign. And that's just, there's a, the snarky owl. And that's just me being kind of a smart ass, you know, basically. You know? So it's, it's just that sarcastic kind of me. Uh, Dodge is, you know, you know, that more intense me. Uh, but when I'm like doing, you know, Saints Row and I'm playing, you know, this psychotic killer or something like that in, uh, in a game, it, that's just me just completely being a kid with an active imagination and some, you know, a person that, I'm not at all, but like, this is my interpretation of that. And I just can, uh, you know, have an active imagination. That's why I think some people talk about, oh, I came from a radio background. Well, I tried to come from a radio background. I'm really, <laughs> I wasn't really not a radio guy. I'm, I'm, I didn't do theater or drama or come from TV or, or a film. So as far as how I developed my acting, of course, you know, the classes and training and, 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 uh, and that, but I think where where was my origin? It was me playing make believe as a kid and just being really good at it, I guess. And now I can, as an adult, I'll play make believe and because uh, it's a uh, it's being able to come up with a point of view. Because make believe is really just having a point of view that's just out there and unique and and buying into it. So with voiceover, it it just kind of allows me to continue to do that. And so when I, whenever I'm doing uh, a, a character or a role or something in a video game, a promo and a commercial, it's just me with a certain point of view, feeling a certain way, instead of being like the specs would say, casual, natural, conversational people, I think, uh, get misled by following specs like that. And it's very easy to do so instead of being casual, natural, conversational, when am I casual? natural conversational you know george when when george comes over the you know four times a year and and we talk about family and hobbies and uh you know vacations and just life and that's casual natural conversational so george i don't know if you realize this many many times you are my muse in uh in in my uh you know points of view for commercial reads so you're really thinking of like uh the guy that you just spoke to recently in your head like oh george was here i should Oh, a, a lot of times, my, uh, and I'll use I'll use what they call you know these lead-ins where I'll think about oh casual, and I'll think about like a conversation where you go, hey George, uh, you know yeah when we went mountain biking the other day and, and you know da 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 da, mm -hmm. and it just kind of seamlessly flows into this yeah. great point of view. So I'm not I'm being natural, conversational, and casual, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about me and me and my friend George talking about biking or vacations or family it makes yeah, it so that's... much easier to make the copy believable because now i actually have my personality in it instead of me trying to be synthetic with a spec right that's I, yeah, but that that sort of brings me to my next thing we've seen that you've been doing a lot of video games I and mean, you started mentioning you know a partial list of the ones you've been doing so if you've been you were doing voiceover all these years. When did you start finding yourself into video games, and, and how did you get cast for those? Yeah, I was with, uh, um, uh, gosh, uh, AVO Talent Agency um, and Sandy Schnarr. Actually, at the time they were S Sandy Schnarr Talent before she merged with uh, Peter Verano and became AVO Talent, and she was my first major um, uh, LA agent. And I didn't even consider myself to be a, uh, a video game actor. Uh, I was thinking that the commercials and, and she was like, you know, your sound, you know, you, maybe you got to cut this kind of gruffness, masculine, whatever. I think you could do well in uh, like some video games, maybe like some war movie or war uh, games or sci-fi or whatever. And I'm like, all right. Okay. So, and, and uh, uh, my first two, uh, um, video games were kind of notable one was uh i think it was resistance Two, uh one of the resistance series games and i was soldier number five or something like that it's a very you know, <laughs> big starring role and uh the director was asking uh we were doing these uh 
uh, battle cries and death screams. And um, I, I didn't have any real background in this. So they were just like uh, describing different things as far as like, okay, your um, acid is being poured over you. <laughs> <laughs> Give a pain reaction to that. Go. Hmm. They're like, uh, well, let me see. The last time acid was poured over me, it, it kind of hurt. Uh, so, yeah, but it was. Uh, but there would be these. Uh, but interestingly enough, it it uh, uh, it solicited a specific sound. Like, oh my god, that would sound like, and I I would let out a blood curdling scream. Or then they'd say, okay, now your heart is being carved out with a spoon. What would that go? <laughs> and I'm like, good Lord, this is a violent game. <laughs> but anyway, but it would solicit these different the, the reactions. So the director actually did a very good job. And I, I got these really unique, uh, you know, different death cries and pain reactions and stuff. And uh, But one of the problems was this, uh, uh, just a few minutes into the session, I didn't really know how to yell properly. Now you're thinking, is there a certain way to actually yell and scream? If you don't uh, want to wear out your voice, yeah. Well, where were you, Dan? When when I? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd... Yeah, I, I was not aware of uh, of how this uh, this yelling on a uh, on a constant high level for at you know up to four hour sessions could uh, you know wear your, wear out your voice. So after a couple of these blood curdling death cries, I literally blew out my voice. Uh, and it was just like, you know, yelling, ah, 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 ah. Oh. Mm. and all of a sudden all, all I could talk was basically like this. It was, it was mortifying. Uh, yeah. we limped through the session, uh, from that point forward uh, but I learned a valuable lesson in, in how to use my instrument properly. Um, and, uh, well, it, it, it didn't cost me too much because I thought, oh, God, this is, this is bad. The next game that I uh, auditioned uh, and uh, booked uh, was Call of Duty World at War. And one of the, I think it's the biggest, uh, you know, video game franchise, uh, you know, in the, in the history of. And the really cool thing was i was third billing on uh the, as far as my character below gary oldman and Kiefer sutherland uh so Ooh, i was yeah. like this is pretty good company to be yeah, in exactly. <laughs> so um but i ended up dying at level four or something like that and then Kiefer <laughs> sutherland who was my corporal <laughs> underneath me i was sergeant sullivan and uh uh, the, uh and then Kiefer sutherland was the corporal that ended up taking over for me since i died and led on to the end of the game and whatever but uh but there was uh some um it was uh, very complimentary to me how uh it was the save sergeant sullivan campaign was uh yeah, on online and people were trying to find is there a secret way to save because so, i opened these double doors and and this is set during world war ii in the pacific and a uh Japanese soldier samurais me in, in the in the gut, and then that's the end of Sergeant Sullivan. So people kept on uh, in these chat rooms and tried to find, is there a secret way to save Sergeant Sullivan? <laughs> yeah, there's a there cheat code not. in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there was no secret way to save Sergeant Sullivan. That was it. Did you ever yeah. channel any of your past careers into your work? I'm thinking oh. of one particular job. That you have. <laughs> Good you. segue, George. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I did. During my quest in the early, early days of voiceover, uh, as I said, I got started in 2004, and I was spending a lot of money at, at that time, classes and equipment and stuff like that, not making virtually anything. So I, uh, I needed to pick up some extra work because I had been in, I was saying, in municipal government, uh, working in parks and recreation, of, of all things. And... Um, and promoting and doing well in that career. But, uh, uh, when I got laid off, I, you know, had no more revenue. My wife, uh, was, uh, the breadwinner and I was the bread eater, uh, at that point. So <laughs> I needed to help contribute to the, the household income, but I needed to be able to leave my days free because I'm auditioning, I'm going into LA and I need to keep my days free. So I was where I was thinking, uh, and I didn't even want to do like the bartender route or the waiter route. Um, because sometimes you'd still start at five or six and whatever. And, and sometimes I'd, I'd be in LA until that time. And it just, mm -hmm. I needed a graveyard shift. 
is what I was uh, wanting. Mm. So I was going to work at like a Seven Eleven or a gas station or something like that, just to you know minimum wage. I you know no not too proud to to, to beg. Basically, I'll, I'll I'll do whatever and help contribute. A buddy of mine, he's a um, uh, a deputy, well now a sergeant in the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department, and he was telling me, "Oh, you want a you want a graveyard shift job? Oh my God, they're hiring as a jailer." Uh, you know, graveyard shift and uh, oh, it's easy. You get benefits, the pay, oh, it's way more. I mean, it's salaried. It's not an hourly job. So you get good, good money. Uh, and like I said, the benefits and everything and no problem getting graveyard shift. They actually having trouble getting people to work the graveyard shift. So I like a dope. I'm like, sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. <laughs> so anyway, I go uh, and become a jailer. And I mean, at the time, I'm in my mid 30s, and um, I had to go through like this police academy for for jailers uh, for like I don't know two or three months, and then uh, and then you know so yeah I'm getting screamed at. And of course, this this um, this class of uh, of, of new uh, jailers is uh, uh, they're mostly in their young 20s, and I'm so I'm pops to everybody. <laughs> I'm the grandpa. So I'm, but I'm keeping up physically. You know, I came in in shape. I wanted to make sure that I was, uh, you know, able to kind of hold my own, and I was. And uh, so, yeah. So I worked as a jailer in downtown LA at Men's Central Jail for uh, you know about a year or so, uh, working the graveyard shift. And boy, the 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 stories I could tell just based on that. <laughs> but yeah. uh, like a lot of my video games, that's rated M for mature. So. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Chris Fries. If you got a question for Chris about uh, anything to do with voiceover, because he's probably done it, uh, throw it in the chat room right now, and uh, we'll get to that question in just a little bit. Uh, so I hear that you're now coaching. Tell us yeah. a little bit why you're why you're doing that and how you're doing that. You know, it it happened innocently enough. I was uh, uh, as I started working then, so about about. 2008, I you know booked that first campaign. 2010, I'm starting to work pretty regular. And shortly after 2010, um, as bookings are just you know increasing and increasing, um, I get contacted by aspiring uh, actors wanting to know how to get in the business. And at first, it was just like, oh, you know, a little advice, a little uh, send an email. And I was always shocked and surprised at how people you know, found me, knew about me or whatever, but uh, they they would find me, track me down and and know that I was in whatever video game or whatever commercial campaign. And, uh, and they find, find me and ask me questions. So, and I was like more than happy to, uh, uh, you know, answer any of their questions. And um, it was just started off with emails. And then there was a, uh, uh, another colleague of mine that I was, toward the end of taking all these group classes, I was towards the end of that period in my uh, career of taking some of the group classes and this uh, other student was just starting. Nice guy though, we hit it off real well. And uh, um, and he was just starting and I was, so I was kind of graduating from that, so to speak, still taking private lessons and stuff from certain uh, instructors, but not taking the group classes anymore. We still kept in touch and he was uh, wanting to continue to, you know, uh, use me as a, as a sounding board is ask questions and stuff and, and, uh, asked me if I could coach him. And I was like, Oh, I, I'm not qualified to coach. I mean, I, I'm, you know, formulating my, you know, way of acting and the point of view and all those things. I'm like, I'll tell you what, I, no charge or anything. I'll just, I'll, I'll let's read together. Let's read. And I'll, I'll give you some advice. I'll give you some direction for what it's worth. And, um, so we did that uh, a few times and, and it seemed to come real natural to me. Um, and like I said, I'd taken group classes from all the, you know, the big uh, casting directors and instructors. And then I took a bunch of uh, uh, private lessons from the likes of uh, Joyce Castellanos, Maurice Tobias, Jody Gottlieb, uh, Elaine Craig, Huck Liggett, uh, you know, a lot of the tops in the industry. So I, I took all this this knowledge that I had gained from the group classes, from the individual uh, private coaching. And then of course, then I start, I'm starting to work. 
So directors are directing me in a certain way that I'm starting to understand what they want and how they want to get it. So all these little nuggets of information I'm just processing and it kind of developed into my own way that this seems to be the most effective way for me to work and to, to improve and to give my best performance. So I'll just communicate that to, you know, my friends. And so my first students were, were, you know, free lessons to basically my, my friends Mm -hmm. that they seemed to really respond to it. It seemed to really work and it seemed to come naturally to me. And, uh, and then, uh, what did As they say? You would teach best what you need to learn the learn most. most. Is that what the yeah. saying is? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's what I always hear. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so, it, and then I think it got to a point where I would get contacted again by somebody saying, "Hey, do you coach? Do to you know?" I'm like, you know, I, yeah. And I could say I. So I've for, at at um, at a very modest price back in the early days. I would uh, uh, I would you know, coach and it, it, it seemed to really work. And then it was just kind of a, a word of mouth thing. I still, to this point, don't actively, uh, um, market myself beyond mentioning it here or, you know, people, you know, mentioning it or something. It's just kind of, it's just a word of mouth that has kind of taken a life of its own. Um, I keep a pretty small stable of students because of the fact that I'm, I'm still working, you know, very regularly. So it's, uh, I can't, fill up my schedule with uh uh students uh and, and that so um uh, but as students kind of you know they come and go and and that so we fit them in and it kind of works but it uh it has it started off innocently enough and then it just kind of took a life of its own and uh, i even speak um every semester at uh the the uh, drama department over at cal state fullerton they have me come in and be a guest speaker and i talk yeah. about voiceover and stuff like that and it's, uh, it's right. a lot it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. So Yeah, it's a, a familiar story, and nothing's more fun than teaching. Uh, once again, our guest is Chris Fries, and we're talking about all the stuff that he's doing. And again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, and we're going to get to those in just a little bit. But we're going to take a quick, quick break right now, and we'll be right back with Chris Fries right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Everybody Show. Vacation time is just around the corner, around the world. For example, here's Australian voiceover pro Andrew Peters on vacation in London recording a commercial with his Portabooth Pro. Why is the Portabooth Pro gaining users worldwide? Well, just listen. Winter's tough. The rain. The wind. The cold. Performers can capture great audio even in acoustically untreated spaces with the Portabooth Pro. Your microphone hears the sound of a human-sized sound booth at a fraction of the size and cost. The Pro accommodates large and long microphones, lengthy scripts, and e-reading devices. The Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro is lined with Auralex Studio Foam. It's a professional quality sound studio that assembles in less than a minute. And its multi-pocketed carrying case makes it super easy to take your gear and your voice wherever you go. Order your Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro now, just $389.99. Only at voiceoveressentials.com. If, if you haven't heard, myself and the crew over at my podcast, The Pro Audio Suite, have collaborated with Centrance to create our very own audio interface that's specifically designed for voiceover actors. It's called the Passport VO, and it is an amazing product that we want to bring to the world, but we cannot do it without reaching a special goal. We have to have pre-sold 100 units in order for Centrance to put this product into production. I'll tell you, there are just no audio interfaces that check every single box that's really important to a voiceover actor. And this thing also replaces multiple pieces of gear in a studio, like a mic mute switch, a mic switcher. So you have the ability to switch between two microphones at any time with the press of a button, each one of them at the right gain. It has two audio interfaces inside the box. So one is dedicated to recording and the other one dedicated to communications like Zoom and Source Connect. You can do playbacks. It's all built in. Head over to Centrance.com slash PassportVO if you're interested in picking up one. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is George the Tech. I hope you have a great one. 
Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in voiceover or to change something about your voiceover career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in Voiceover. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. All right, we're back with Chris Freist. Hey, George. You know something? You suddenly learn how to read an entire spot all the way through without taking a break? <laughs> no, that, sir, that is just really freaking good editing. <laughs> That's what that is. Impressive. I always tell voice actors, you're going to be either good at one or probably both, but more than likely one or the other. You're going to be really good at reading scripts and writing them, or you're going to be really, really good at editing them. So if you <laughs> if you want to be a voice actor, learn to be a voice actor. I am not. I'm an, I am a producer editor. I can edit. So anyway, thank you. <laughs> try, try, try to do a, a 60 second read and you're like at the last word and like, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> try to go back and edit that. No, that's just very clever editing. <laughs> yeah. That's why you never do the video and the audio at the same time. It's like you cover it with pictures. That's what usually works best anyway we're talking with chris fries and uh we're talking about all the stuff that he's doing and we got lots of questions from our vast audience out there all across the fruited plain and other points uh on the planet uh why don't you start with the first one from from keela ward there's a name we haven't heard before sure thing uh I, i'm very interested in vo i had a demo put together and now i'm looking to start auditioning for audiobooks i have my ein that's you need that. That's true to get paid by big, big jobs. Um, should I get an LLC and what business entity is best in this line of work? Chris, mm. I have my own answer. I think all three I of have, us have, yeah, I have an answer for, for that one. Yeah. Chris, do you have any uh, info on that to shed light on that? You know, I, uh, I have become a corporation, uh, and yeah, I am an employee of one and, uh, it's worked out for me from a tax standpoint, uh, uh, as far as the uh, expenses uh, in that. So, yeah, I am a, uh, specifically a, uh, a corporation, I think a C-Corp, S-Corp. I got to talk to my accountant about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but I am a corporation and it has worked out well for me and it, from a tax standpoint. But I cannot speak too intelligently on the uh, uh, beyond that, but it, it does work for, for me. Yeah, It's certainly different for everybody and you really yeah. do need to talk to a CPA because... I, I, have, I have been doing business in California since 2004, and yet I'm still not an LLC. I keep being told it's not worth it uh, for the amount that I'm earning yet. So it really does depend on your position, who your CPA is, and their attitude about things such as LLCs. Depends on the state you're in, of course, too, yeah. because some states it's very expensive to organize, um, and others it's very cheap. Um, so, um, yeah, you definitely want to talk to a tax professional. But yeah, I wouldn't I worry about that at the very, very beginning of your career. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that's I, what I was I didn't, say. Yeah. I didn't work on something like that until I started to book uh, about that 2010 uh, uh, time. So I got started, like I said, 2004. And I again, I wasn't really making very much to have it be worth my while. And then, uh, and then I transitioned over once the revenue started to come in a little bit better. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Uh, Greg Cooper asks... How did you decide to focus on specific genres like video games? You know, it wasn't something that I manually, like, I want to do this. It was just where uh, my, uh, where the bookings kind of led me to. And also a lot of direction and guidance from my agents uh, 
I, I didn't think that uh, there were certain things where like ADR, voice matching and stuff that I started booking in those areas. Uh, my agent thought, you kind of sound like Thomas Hayden Church or you kind of sound like Jeff Bridges. You should do this uh, voice match for him or this character actor, uh, uh, you know, you sound like him or this. I don't I don't think I sound like any of those people, but I have booked uh, at least a dozen different voice matches uh and uh, I don't consider myself to be a good at impersonating any of these. Uh, but uh, uh, and whenever I hear the end result, I did a couple of movies uh, for Jeff Bridges. One of them was R.I.P.D. with uh, Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges. And uh, he has this uh, Jeff Bridges has uh, this uh, very slurry uh, kind of Texas accent. And he kind of talks like this. And uh, in R.I.P.D. He plays his old Western uh sheriff that comes back to you know in the afterlife I watched it. A, it was that was a fun movie i watched it, it. Was, it was a lot of fun it was special Thank effects you. and whatever That's so that was on. and that was i guess so uh, what worked and, and it's funny in the uh uh i guess in post-production how some of that worked was uh some of his lines some of his words were unintelligible and they're in post-production no. and he's not yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh and who knew and, yeah. and, and Mr. Bridges was unavailable to do the pickups. So they need a voice match uh, to, to, to step in. And uh, so I was able to do that in certain parts of the movie and in the trailer. I, uh, and for me, because you know, you know your own voice. But for me, whenever I've watched that movie or seen the trailer or whatever, I know exactly where I am and where Jeff is. And uh, so, and when I play the, uh, the movie or the scene for somebody else. And I'm like, can you hear it? Can you tell, isn't it obvious? This is embarrassing. Oh my God. And they're like, what are you talking about? Where I start and he starts and, and how you could totally hear the difference. He's like, where did you start? And where did he start? I couldn't tell. So they couldn't tell, but I could. <laughs> so, well, you but, know, you know and I think yeah. we, we all know our own voice so well, so we can totally hear the difference, but uh, other people couldn't. And I guess that's the point. So, I didn't really hear it in myself, but yeah, like I said, I booked a lot of different uh, uh, in that area, and it was what led me to whatever, video games, commercials, promos. I tried, I trained in really a lot of things and everything. I tried audiobooks, I tried, but, but for me, I think audiobooks are wonderful as far as I love listening to them, and I enjoy, I think the voice talents that do audiobooks are exceptionally talented people. I don't have the attention span and the, and the, the uh, endurance to do uh, uh, an audio book. So it was an area where I tried, but I, I couldn't, that, that didn't seem to be a comfort zone for me. Uh, I have a very short attention span, apparently. <laughs> so I kind of stayed in my lane with uh, some of the, uh, some of the jobs, but uh, I found, I trained in a little bit of everything to see what I liked, what I was good at, uh, you know, what I, you know, what I could book. Uh, and from a revenue standpoint, uh, you know, I'm trying to make money here and I don't want to limit myself to just one genre of voiceover when there are several genres available and maybe I can book here and there. And so, I mean, I, I just, I was led based on the belief that my agents had in me and they thought you sound like you could do this, or I think you could do that. I had no idea. And, and the belief that the agents had in me was critical because if you're not at the right agency where where the they're just cattle calls and they're just churning out here's the audition whatever uh i still get a lot of stuff where i've just given auditions but at some of the top agencies when you get to those a level agencies the cesds the atlases the the dpns the sbvs then you need then you have to have uh, somebody that's kind of in your corner going to bat for you pitching you uh for certain things and then telling you hey i think you should do this uh and that and it really helped my career because i had no idea that i could do a lot of the things that i ended up booking but it was purely because i had great agents behind me starting with Sh sandy schnarr and now i'm a, i've been at cesd now since 2009 and they've just taken wonderful care of me and, and they go to bat for me uh daily and put me in the front of the line and a lot of opportunities and uh and yeah changed my career for sure uh for the best but it's just where i was led and so now most of my 
uh, work is in commercial video games, promos, and then like in-show narration uh, documentaries and stuff for like History Channel and Discovery Channel, stuff like that. All right. This cool. one comes from Grace Newton saying, uh, have you ever had a face palm moment or made a disastrous <laughs> mistake in your career? And then how did you handle it? We all learn from our mistakes, right, Chris? Yeah, I'd say so. Well, I guess my blowing out my voice in my very first uh, video game session would be definitely the, yeah. the face palm moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I've managed to sidestep quite a few landmines. I, I, I listened to, a, I took a lot of good advice from a lot of good people. My mentor, uh, you know, you guys know Scott Rummel uh, and, you know, now, you know, good dear friend of mine and stuff. He, he gave me a lot of guidance on the, the do's and don'ts and the things to worry about and the things not to worry about. I was always just so anxious about uh, any, odd, uh, I guess uh, another face, uh, you know, palm to face uh, moment would be calling my agent right after I'd sent an audition asking, Hey, how did they like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. They, they don't like that there. And that was my first, that was my first uh, LA agent. I had his Osbrink talent agency. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd sent an audition. I thought it was really good. <laughs> but I called I my agent, not even email, <laughs> not, not even an email. I'd call and ask to speak to, to my, hey, I just wanted to call to say, you know, I haven't heard about that audition that I just did like, you know, yesterday afternoon. I know it's not even been 24 hours, but yeah. So what'd they think? Did they like it? <laughs> Any feedback? <laughs> yeah. You only do that once, yeah, but you know, hey, at least you got through to them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, my agent sent me straight like, Chris. We'll call you. Don't, don't call us. <laughs> All right. Julia um, Iotti, I think that's how you pronounce that, says, I've been hearing a lot of people having allergies, colds, or just feeling under the weather, including myself. I've been having a cough. What's your cure to keep your voice in top shape, especially with all the all the pollen that's out there right now here yeah. in Southern Cal? Yeah. I, I don't have allergies, thank God, uh, but... Uh, but yeah, getting sick is the worst. Uh, I, I I drink a lot of water, um, and that uh, helps uh, you know keep my you know the cells in my body strong, fights off infection. Uh, I've done things like uh, I've added a steam shower to uh, my. Uh, this was advice I got from an opera singer that I, I was at a cocktail party. We we're chatting and. I don't know how we got into steam showers. No, we we didn't literally get into a steam shower. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, that 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 topic came up, and he talked about how vocal health and how a steam shower is great. And so I had that. Eventually, did that. That was a nice. Uh, also, being a corporation, I could expense the construction of a uh, steam shower uh, at uh, without um, you know with the, the tax benefits from that. But um, mm. Yeah, I I uh, I try to uh, I wash my hands like a germaphobe, uh, take the vitamins, and then when I do get sick, the first hint of a cold, and it actually does work, is those zinc tablets. I guess there's coldies and Zycam. Zycam that really great does stuff. seem to help. Uh, but you got the very first sign of that cold. You start feeling that little tickle in the back of your throat. Start pounding them like every two hours or something like that. That seems to really. Uh, reduce the uh, amount or the, the the severity of the cold. Then, if it hits me and it just knocks me on my butt, I uh, I get a uh, steroid injection. Uh, not recommended. Talk to your doctor, but it's because it can it can mess with your internal organs and steroids and stuff. So you don't want to do that. As a matter of fact, my doctor does check my records and say you don't want to do this more than like once or twice a year. Um, but it, for me, it's like my livelihood. I, I work literally, I'm blessed to work literally every day and, uh, and doing campaigns. I, um, uh, when I have to do a pickup or a price change for Kubota, you know, so they're keeping the body of the spot the same. So 90% of it was something I recorded months ago. And then we're updating the offer, you know, uh, offer good until June, uh, June 30th. Well, now we're updating it to be October 30th or whatever. So I got to do a pickup of the offer. And if I have a cold, I'm going to sound different than I did um, in, when mm. I first recorded it. So so it's one Offer thing to starts Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so Offer it's starts Friday. Sounding, sounding consistent is critical. Um, 
So I will, uh, I will do that. Um, I will gargle with warm salt water. I will drink uh, uh, decaffeinated chamomile tea with lemon and manuka honey. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys, you know, the manuka honey thing. It's, mm-hmm. I guess, yep. it's from Australia or New Zealand. New Zealand. It's, yeah, it's got these like healing properties or something in the, and it's like for a little jar about yay big, it's like, you know, 40 bucks or something like yeah, that. But, but it's, uh, yeah. it, it's pretty effective. And uh, so all these little remedies and, and then rest, rest, rest. Don't use your voice. Try to get lots of sleep so you can mm-hmm. recover. So your bodies and the cells within your body can kind of fight off the infection. And you get, uh, something as simple and, and, and you think it innocuous as just rest. No, no, it's not. An, it, it is very effective. So, uh, but yeah, those, that's what I do. All right. We got time for like one more question here. Uh, we got one from Bettina Lentorno, uh, listening to us and watching us on YouTube it says, hi, Chris, I'm so happy to listen about your work and journey in VO. I have a question for you and this is the place to do it. Uh, I'm a medical interpreter in English, Spanish, and Italian, and for the past year studied with Pat Fraley. I've just begun to market myself, and my genres of choice are medical narration and NGOs in my three languages. You have any marketing advice? (laughs) Wow. Specifically for that? (laughs) Those, maybe not. (laughs) Wow, that is niche stuff. But you know what? That's great. Uh, uh, to, to because niches need to to be filled, and if if that's something that you have a an interest in, there is a, a market for that. Um, and it's 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 funny the marketing in general. First of all, Pat Fraley, awesome guy. I took some of my early classes from him, and he's so um, he's just the one of the warmest human beings. He gave me a great piece of direction, uh, uh, or uh, telling me at the end of one of the classes. Um, I said, Hey, how did I do? How do you think I did? You know, the very, very early in my career. And he says, well, it's hard to tell, you know, we just started working together, but you see, you know, it seemed pretty good, but you took direction. Well, and I didn't really think that was much of a compliment when he said I took direction. Well, I'm like, well, you told me to, to read it faster. I read it faster. You told me to sound brighter. I sounded brighter. I, I didn't say that. I'm just thinking this, but I'm like, Oh, thank you. But I'm thinking that's not much of a compliment, but I, uh, then, um, uh, in sessions, directors would tell me, "Oh, you did a really good job." Uh, when you, I asked you to take a second and a, uh, a second and a half off of a, a read, and I did it, uh, then it was like, uh, "Well, great, thanks." Or you were brighter, and I did it, and I started getting compliments more and more like that, and it seemed to mean something. Where taking direction is actually in and of itself a skill, not just being a voice actor, but being able to change and transition on the fly in a session and give the director what they want. Because I'm just step number three or four in a 15-step process for the producer of a, of a spot or a video game. The last thing they need to worry about is getting through a voiceover session. They just want to get through it and stuff. So anyway, um, uh, he was a great guy. But marketing in general, I, I, how I, I would establish whatever genre I was in, I would anytime I would audition or get an email or, or get a contact or get a job, I would save those contacts, those emails. And then periodically, about three, four times a year, I would send an email to uh, uh, follow up. And now this list, and I do this a couple, you know, a few times a year. This list is over four hundred individual contacts, and I send out that many individual, not like uh, the mass emails, because something personal. Like sometimes I know a producer is a Dodger fan, so I'm like, "Hey, Dodgers are looking good." Hey, anyway, I just wanted to share the, my latest uh, commercial spot or campaign have a good one, whatever. And more often than not, it's to my surprise, they'd come back to me and say, oh, hey, Chris, great to hear from you. Hey, you know, it just so happens we have this mm-hmm. audition that came across and uh, you'd be perfect for it. So it, it, it's, uh, it always seems to generate job opportunities. So in your niche, as you develop contacts in that genre, in that industry, maintain those contacts and maintain any relationship that you get don't just like, oh, great, nice to meet you, bye, and then hope. No, keep in touch and keep track of your uh, uh, of your communications because they come back and you're you're building. You're a business owner. You're a you're a and, and you got to build your business. And yeah. it's a, it's about who you know, not necessarily what you know. Yeah, what we used to call a tickler file. 
in the, in the life insurance business. Anyway, Chris, it is a pleasure to talk with you again. It's been quite a while, and uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight and uh, and letting us know all these important things about your amazing career so far. So good luck in the future. Oh, hey, thanks, guys. Uh, always uh, always a pleasure. And we'll see you in another eight years or so, yeah? <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe, maybe not quite that long. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll see you in the summer, uh, Chris. Right. That's right, yes. Uh, Okay, Chris Fry is our guest tonight. All right, George and I will be right back to wrap these things up and re-rack it for Tech Talk right after this. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, here's something I have don't get a chance to do much, and that's a live spot, like George does every week. But anyway, you know, one of the most important things you can do when you start off in voiceovers, you got to have a website. But early on, you know, when people are like trying to do websites, you know, some people are good at HTML and other people can do all sorts of stuff or use a, a you know, some sort of system and make their own website. But sometimes those are too detailed. And the fact of the matter is, is when you're trying to start in voiceover and you want to have a website because you got to have a website, what you really need to do is go on over to a a new sponsor, even though they're an old sponsor, maybe you remember uh, voiceactorwebsites.com. Well, now we have voiceactor.com. Voiceactor.com is a great website. It's templated websites. So all you have to do is, is go in there and find a template that works for you, and you can customize it. It's And it can be free to start. So all you have to do is go over to... Uh, voiceactor.com they create websites that are mobile responsive easy to use you can edit it yourself as i said and it's built for voice actors by voice actors so go on over to voiceactor.com and what are you get what are you going to get you're going to get a really great website really fast and george and i have done it we were able to do websites for our kids in 10 minutes or less. So go on over to voiceactorwebsites.com. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as WOVO. Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with a, a chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who, who speak, speak for a living. living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Yes, you are, and uh, we're great having Chris on. He just has great stories, and we could probably have him on for another three or four hours and keep Absolutely, going with that. Absolutely, yeah. Salt of the earth, nicest guy ever, and uh, it's great to see nice guys win with, when, when they do the right things, and Chris is 
Chris has just, it's been awesome. I mean, I'm, I've been watching his career. Like, I mean, when I first helped him with his very first vocal booth, you know, and then he said, I'm ready to build something custom in like 2010. Ooh, I mean, it's good. just been an amazing thing to watch. I'm, I'm proud of him. Good yeah. Guy. Uh, next week on this very show, or you could hang out and watch live, we've got Tech Talk number 101, which is going to be fabulous because we have all sorts of cool stuff to show you and to talk about. Uh, the week after that, the one and only Rebecca Davis will be joining us. Uh, just a wonderful Love lady Rebecca. and a very successful voice actor. And then after the week, about two weeks later, Dave Walsh, one of the best coaches in voiceover. Just Now the return on our calls. Yeah, no, it's like, hey, okay, I, I, I'm done with all this the stuff. The spring travel season has worn, has worn down. They have more time now. Yeah. Great, great to have them all here. Yeah. You've got a webinar coming up? Uh, boy, we do. We do a lot of them. And so the one coming up this go-around is Reaper. First time that we are teaching a Reaper class. Well, let's say we, not me. I'm not teaching it. I'm not a Reaper expert. I'm bringing one in, his name is Steven Gonzalez. He is a real Reaper expert. So we have a beginner class on the third, uh, let's see, actually at 3 p.m. Um, the following Tuesday after the show. Uh, that would be the 18th. And then the week after would be the advanced version for people that feel like they're really, already working efficiently in Reaper but want to learn a lot of new power user tricks. So, yeah, if you're interested in, interested in that, head over to georgethe.tech, go to the webinars page, and uh, use VOBS Fan 10 to get 10% off on really anything on v georgethe.tech, including the webinars. All right. And we have our weekly donors list, people who have been sending us donations to keep the show just amazing and technologically perfect most of the time. Anyway, Grace Newton. Robert Leadham. Steve Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Raider. Shauna Pennington Baird. <laughs> Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And, and Sandra, Sandra Man Manwiller. Manwiller. I love Sandra how we say her name differently every time. <laughs> I just can't. I don't yeah. know what's going on with that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, join our mailing list. It's starting to really grow because you guys are watching the show and you want to know what's going on. So go over to our website, vobs.tv, and click on Become a Subscriber, I think is what it says on the website. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors as well, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And... and World Voices, the Voices. industry association of freelance voice talent. Thanks to Jeff Holman for getting all the stuff together in the chat room. Appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks. And, of course, Sue Merlino, who's sitting there pushing all the buttons and making it look Thank like this is an actual TV point. show. So we appreciate that. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, we keep trying to bring you the best people in the business, and we're going to keep doing that for as long as we can keep doing it. And uh, But the, bom the, the bottom line in voiceover is... It's not an easy business, but when it comes to being a good voice actor and a good, <laughs> having good audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B -S. B S. Stay tuned for Tech Talk Live if you're watching us live and get to ask your questions. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.